And uh, I think we'll get on to our last conference. Save the best for last, Nintendo. Yep. Uh, these are just in uh, order of when they <laughs> came out, but Nintendo had a pretty good conference. So um, we'll start with you. We'll start with the uh, the coup d'état, as they say. I don't even know if that's a thing. Um, what did you think uh, was good coming out of the uh, Nintendo conference? Obviously, Smash Bros. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Yeah, we should say the big reveal. <laughs> Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It had every character from all the old games. Sixty-eight characters are going to yeah. be in the game. Sixty-eight. Young Link, Pichu, um, like Mega all the Man, all the, the DLC breakers. characters. Yeah, yeah. It's just. It's crazy. They, so I was excited to see Sonic and Pac-Man and all those classic video game characters um, too. What's his name? Uh, Snake is back. Solid Snake, yeah, absolutely. Um, they did introduce a few new characters. I will right, start with Daisy because she's the most kind of disappointing one. I think I think it was like maybe a fan demand. Like I don't know why else they would put it in because I think they might think they need more female characters, which is fine. And I get that she's very similar to Peach. It's just another Echo she's character, just as they a call them. clone character. Which, like... is, which is fine. There's Daisy fans out there, so they get the opportunity to play as her, even though it's kind of an Echo character. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about Ridley, because Ridley's kind of the most exciting. That was definitely a fan ask, because people have been asking for Ridley for quite some time yeah. now. Um, it was kind of seen as, it, we can't do it because he's so big. Um, shrink him <laughs> yeah just you, shrink him what'd you think of ridley in the game i thought it was cool it was a cool trailer yeah um he looks cool he, he looks, looks strong scary. yeah i'd say he's the scariest character without yeah. A doubt. yeah honestly he looks really overpowered yeah. too because he's so big his reach is incredible but he's not like bowser where he's like slow he's also really fast too. Yeah. so he's got a big reach he's really fast and he's also got some uh ranged attacks where he shoots that fireball. And like, can he fly? Like, and he, I think he can fly, too. So it's just like, how do you defeat him? How do you beat him? Uh, one of the things about the whole Smash Bros. thing is, like, people thought, okay, they're obviously announcing a bunch of new characters. But that yeah. didn't really happen. They announced Inklings, um, Daisy, and, and Ridley. And that was pretty yeah. much it. I think uh, he said it in the, in the conference that his priority was getting every single character in. That's great. I think it's yeah. wonderful. And because all the updates, and there were many updates on a lot of characters, it's like... Yeah, he was kind of like, I hope you weren't tr- like thinking of like too many new characters. Like he said that, um, and I think it was more a dynamic thing because he's like, "Yeah, we have one more character for you." But at the same time, it's like I appreciate all those characters in it. I'm pretty happy with that, and it doesn't stop them from releasing more characters in the future. So I, uh, I do like. I think they said that only to start with, you only get to play the original Smash Bros. roster, right? Then you unlock every character, which preferred. I like that. I love that. Actually. I love yeah. that. Like you I have to earn those characters. I didn't like in in Smash Four where it's just you get every character off the bat. Yeah, because there's a point to playing through the campaign or story or whatever. Anything, any of the other modes, trying yeah. to get the, like it, it feels like a challenge. Like, what are the chances that these characters are actually going to be DLC? You have to like buy them for a dollar. Which ones? Like all uh, of the extra ones no. outside of the core. You don't think so? Nintendo they would have said pull it. That? Nintendo would pull that on us. No, they're not EA. <laughs> um, I do hope there are DLC characters. I hope they. I also hope they reveal more and then have DLC later. Yeah. Um, but I I am a bit worried who they are and are not putting in the game. Like we saw that Waluigi was an assist trophy in the game. Yeah. I guess that means he's not going to be in the like. It it makes me realize, like I said, it, like is there a certain disconnect between. Nintendo and Bandai Namco and their fans like why are they not seeing like every person saying like I want Ridley, Waluigi and King K. Rool and they're like I think they see it but they're like our like the budget has to go somewhere and it's like where are our priorities and if Waluigi's 10th on the list it's like okay we got to get all the characters in we're developing a new game for a brand new console so we're just like let's get the game out with all the characters and that's fantastic that's a huge win right because everybody's going to buy the game um, spending the time and effort to put Waluigi in on the game is kind of like, well, we could have put budget somewhere else, right? And they spent it on revamping all the characters. I think we're going to see eventually Waluigi in the game. I but think we will. It makes me worried that he is an assist trophy. I think he's going to be an echo of uh, Wario. I know you don't like that, but I think that's the only way he makes it in the game. I don't know, like, but that does mean like they put some budget towards making Daisy, and like. True. What is what is again? The maybe they looked at it and they said again, just not enough female characters. But like they could have gone another route without a doubt, like different female characters. Like yeah. they could have put in a uh, uh, Midna. They could have been put in Impa from Legend of Zelda. They could have put in. Uh, Don't they have Impa? No. Pretty sure they do. Doesn't. 
Oh, no, they don't. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but, sorry, I'm thinking of Sheik. Yeah, they um, could have put in, um, like, maybe, I don't know, like, as an example. Be sick, Lara Croft. Exactly. As a Smash Bros. character? Yeah, she'd be awesome as Smash Bros. Especially since... So that, that was kind of like your bad, too, eh? You were talking about the lack of new characters on this. Yeah. So you kind of covered your bad. That's okay, because I've got, like, another bad that I kind of want to talk about that I might write down now before I forget it. Um, but one of the good things that I wanted to talk about was Super Mario Party, which was a huge surprise. Yes. It was a good announce. I'm really excited for it. In the last podcast, we kind of predicted it. Um, and because, uh, again, my fiance is not too into video games, I think this is one that we would have a lot of fun playing together because we are so competitive. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited for that. Also really excited that they got away from like the, the newest system that's like cars and it's not very competitive. All this one garbage. looks really competitive and really awesome. So really excited about that. Super Mario Party. It looks yeah. sweet. And it's releasing soon. October. Yeah. That's yeah, that's great. true. Yeah, that was also very surprising was the uh, release date. It was just like, yeah, here it is. They did that with a lot of their stuff though. It was Nintendo like, has a very is. full last quarter. Yeah. Smash Bros. Um, a Mario Party. Uh, Pokemon. What else? Um, Mario Tennis is coming out soon. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So a lot of good good release dates. Yeah. So Super Mario Party is coming out. That's really exciting. I'm really pumped for that. Um, we got to see some gameplay from it too, which all looked really fun. Um, what did you think was bad from the... Uh, oh, I guess we just covered yours. But yeah. my thing was kind of like the, the conference is always a little too short. It's kind of lacking pizzazz a little bit. So we just talked about Super Mario Party. There was no like big like, oh, wow, oh my God. It was just kind of like... And we're talking about one more game. Here it is. All right, moving on. It's like, wait, no, show me more. Like, yeah. Whereas if they were to have like the onstage conference, they'd be forced to be dramatic about it. Yeah. You know? But because of the video, they don't have to be dramatic about it. So we were kind of like missing that uh, that drama, I think, and that pizzazz from yeah. the Nintendo conference. Just a bit more explanation would have been nice. Yeah. Like them saying, like, listen, we're j- ditching the car thing. We're going back to Mario Party 7 or something yeah. like that. Yeah, it would have been really, really cool. So yeah. that's kind of one of the bad things that I thought from the uh, Nintendo conference. I had another bad thing that I want to talk about, but I totally forget it now. As if it's writing it down, as I was writing it down, I was like, I don't remember it. Um, mobile games. That's what um, it was, yeah. Okay, so there was one more bad thing that I want to talk about. And I know this is a good thing for you, <laughs> but lack of mobile games. Like, they've been making a push for new mobile games. We've got Animal Crossing, Super Mario Run, new Fire Emblem game. Um, and the new president came out and he's like, we want to make a push for mobile, which is fine. But one of my predictions was putting a like notable character as the core of a franchise of mobile. And I thought it was going to be Dr. Mario or Waluigi. Uh, we got nothing from mobile. Absolutely nothing. I think they'll save it for a direct. You think? Yeah. Again, I don't think the E3 stage is a good place for mobile games. Yeah. I think they'll save it for a direct. And it's funny because they, Reggie was talking about something and he was like, we love that you can play on the go on your Switch, blah, 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 all this stuff. I was like, oh, this is leading into a mobile game because he's talking about mobility and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then it led to Pokemon and that's fine because I love myself some Pokemon. Uh, but yeah, so didn't see any um, mobile games and that was kind of disappointing. That's another kind of bad thing that I saw from the Nintendo conference. Yeah. So, um, What was kind of the last uh, good thing on your list for the uh, Nintendo conference? You know what it is. <laughs> I do know what it is. Everybody watching probably knows what it is. It's Fire Emblem. The new Fire Emblem game. Fire Emblem Three Cities? Three. Three Houses. Three Houses. Fire Emblem uh, Three Houses. There's apparently three main characters. That's the whole thing. They probably are from like different uh, countries or something. Um, at first, I was like, what is going on? Like, what is this? Because it showed, like, you know, the same combat, same grid based, but then it showed, like, armies coming in to fight with you. But yeah. that's. But then I watch it more. I was like, "That's just background noise. That doesn't well, it's matter." Because like during the conference, I was like, "You should be way more pumped about this." Yeah. But you were like on edge. You were like, "I don't know about this." Yeah. <laughs> but no, I watched it like two more times. I was like, "Okay, I get it." Like, I th- I think that's even one of the things I said in my article way back was like, "I want like like bigger battles, something yeah. going on in the background," and that's that's what it is. It does look grander. It like, looks like awesome. It's yeah. you and like. From the grid-based combat going into actual fighting is so seamless, and it goes right in, and there's armies fighting beside you, and it looks sweet. Um, it does look really good, yeah. Again, that's all we saw. We only saw a bit, but the characters look beautiful. The game looks beautiful. They're going with, like, the anime cutscenes, which I'm a bit iffy about. Anime video games don't always um, are very popular. Yeah. It's usually a niche community, and with Fire Emblem going so, uh, like, gaining in popularity... I thought they'd go more of the other Fire Emblem games that aren't like that, but yeah. who knows? Cool. Yeah, Fire Emblem does look pretty good. I'm not really a big Fire Emblem fan, but 
I'd love to watch you play it and see how excited you get about yeah. it. Um, and one thing that, or the last thing that I kind of thought was like really good for, on Nintendo's part was kind of their push for indie games. Something that we've kind of seen uh, Nintendo dip their toe in a little bit. I think they've done it a lot. Have they, well, recently with the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, the, in the past. So it's kind of like they slowly dip their toe in it. And the C3, there was like, hey, we got more indies coming out. So I thought that was good on there. We got Overcooked 2. Which is coming to the Nintendo Switch. It was, um, whenever we did our article for the top, uh, game for couples, um, Overcooked was on everybody's list. And every, when I put it out on Twitter, everybody was like, Overcooked, Overcooked. So it's good to see Overcooked 2 coming out. That's gonna be an exciting game for couples. Yeah. <laughs> Hollow Knight, which I know is a huge, like, fan favorite from a lot of people, is gonna be coming to the Nintendo Switch. And is available today, and that hopefully we release cool. this podcast today so that makes sense. But today is what, September? June 12th? Why did I September. say September? Ugh, thinking ahead. Yeah. Uh, today is June 12th, so it's coming out, uh, it came out June 12th today, so that's kind of awesome. Isn't it crazy that, like, um, I've been here for six months now. Half a year already. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. crazy. That is pretty awesome. Um, Killer Queen Black, which came up and I was like, ah, I don't really care about that game, but... Uh, it looked pretty fun, yep. and uh, it's another indie title coming to Nintendo Switch, so that's awesome. And then the big one where I was, I guess, Fortnite was coming to Nintendo Switch, and Casey played it and didn't really like it all that much, <laughs> and that's fine. That's fine. Not a big Fortnite fan, but uh, yeah, so Fortnite coming to Nintendo Switch. Kids everywhere, and Jake Paul fans everywhere are throwing their hands up and are very excited about it. It's so. like, they're indie games, but they're also like big indie games. Like, Well, yeah, like PUBG is is an in, indie game, technically. Yeah. It, was, it was made in, independently. It's growing, it's huge, which is fantastic, same with Fortnite. So, um, yeah, that was awesome to see. I think one thing that we should honorable mention was uh, Pokemon, their coverage on Pokemon. At first, I didn't like it too much because they just mentioned it and then they talked about the Pokeball. That comes with Mew, by the way, so that's, like, awesome. Yeah. Um, but uh, they did a lot of, like, gameplay coverage afterwards. At the Treehouse Live. Event. At the Treehouse Live. And so we did get a deep dive into the gameplay, some of the Pokemon that we get to see, um, some of the... Uh, I like. I love them showing off. That Pokemon pop up in the wild. It's not just random encounter- encounters in the grass. Riding and the Onyx. Riding like- your Onyx is so cool. And your partner with you the whole time. And if you choose like a Voltorb as your partner, it like rolls around with you and stuff rather than like hopping like yeah. all the other Pokemon. So um, it looks really good. It looks beautiful too. It it's without a really doubt good. the best looking Pokemon game. Yeah, it does look really good. Also too. the music. I love the classic yeah. Gen 1 music like going on. Like, oh, uh, it was beautiful. And I personally don't mind the whole just like throwing a ball and catching it. I personally don't mind the battling because in the anime, you rarely ever seen them battle a Pokemon yeah. and then catch it. <clears throat> it was always just like, hey, I see you and I throw this ball at you. And like um, Ash catching the Primate, was it? Every Pokemon they ever had, he just befriended it and then they jumped on the ball. So I, I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, yeah, they still have trainer battles. Like, it's fine. Yeah, trainer battles, you know? gym battles, gym badges, probably the Elite Four as well. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of hoping that uh, they allow you to catch all 150 in the game. Like, I'm hoping there's no trading to evolve. I'm hoping there's no, like, there's no Charmander in the game. Like, just give us all 150, man. Well, it, no did, point. it did show the character had Charmander, Squirtle, and Bulbasaur, so... Yeah, and it's kind of weird that they had all three, too. Like, I kind of want to earn those. Like, I want yeah. them to be really rare and really hard to get as well, so... I don't know, we'll see. I kind of have faith in Nintendo's design options, so they're also really, really at good. First, it, so. At first, I was a bit skeptical, but I'm sold at this point. I want yeah, the game. It does look, yeah, it looks really good. Because I, yeah, I told you before, I was not sold. I was like, how does it add to my Pokemon experience? Mm-hmm. And they're definitely adding to the experience with building that relationship with your Pokemon. Again, uh, the getting rid of the random encounters, um, and then reinvented Kanto looks really good, so... Looks awesome. It looks like there's a lot more story to it as well. Yeah. Like, it looks like they kind of have, like, a story mode to it. I mean, the original Pokemon's had kind of a story too, but it looks like they have a pretty good story to it. So, mm-hmm. I'm very sold on it. So Me too. That's really awesome. So, that's pretty much it for our E3 wrap-up. Um, who, who who do you think won E3? Who do I think won E3? So, if I had to choose, 